Hello and welcome to this special edition of Focus on Africa as we cover the Zimbabwean elections. Well, it is a fast in 38 years without Robert Mugabe who was ousted last year and there are very many issues being discussed and being thrashed out. Today we begin with the issue of security. I spoke to the national police spokesperson who told me she's got intelligence that there are people who are trying to disrupt the election during the polls. This is what she told me. At the moment I'm, I'm, I'm not privileged to, to disclose who they are but they should know that as intelligence um, our intelligence, we already have that information and we are already monitoring to see what is going to take place. And they have actually deployed some people to cause those disruptions. I will single out one province, which is uh, Land, one of our Mashonaland provinces. They have actually deployed groups of people that are intending to cause disruptions. But we are fully alert, we are ready, and uh, we also want to say they should not engage in any act of violence. So what, what is the level of preparedness uh, by you know, the security forces for the elections before and after? Our, our level of preparedness, I can say it's now 800%. We are more than ready, we are prepared to ensure that these elections are peaceful, to ensure that ele uh, uh, security is provided for at all the polling stations and also ensure that at all identified hotspots, at strategic positions, our police officers are deployed. So what then are you doing about the kind of intimidation we're hearing about, especially um, against women who are running for, for various elected positions? We have spoken against that type of intimidation which has been perpetrated against women and I know I'm not going to single out particular individuals but I know those who have been intimidated have come forward and placed their uh, reports. They've lodged their reports with the police and we are actually currently investigating. Well that's a National Police Spokesman Charity Charamba. Well, as we had there, she is, uh, or security forces are ready to deal with any situation. But uh, just take a look at this. Hundreds of people uh, marching through the streets of the capital, Harare today, calling uh, for peaceful elections. Now, uh, voters appear to be determined to avoid uh, the violence that has marred previous polls. Now, much of the campaigns uh, that, uh, ha that have been taking place here have been dominated by allegations against the Electoral Commission and the way they have conducted the process before these elections, especially the Movement for Democratic Change Alliance, which has been saying they're not really happy with the voter roll, with the ballot papers, with how they're transporting the ballot boxes. And I've been speaking to the Secretary General of the Alliance, the MDC Alliance, and uh, I asked him, really why are they taking part in these polls if they are really unhappy if we don't win and we don't win fairly we will accept the results but as i can as, as i can as, as i as i said before there are a lot of things there is a lot of opaqueness in this process for example right now we do not know where the ballot papers are we do not know who, who is the custard of those ballot papers and we do not know how many they are and so on so that information had we been given that information which we are entitled to in terms of the law anyway there would be no problem but right now we do not have information about key things but you still went ahead for the elections did you we went ahead for the election for a variety of reasons number one uh, our aim is to take over government our power through peaceful democratic and constitutional means number two our our supporters called for us to do that to go for the election number three by going to the election we are leaving it to, to be the work between the Zimbabwe Election Commission and the people of Zimbabwe. Well, uh, the incumbent president, uh, Emerson Mnangagwa, took over a very difficult economy. My colleague, Shinga Inyoka, has been looking at the challenges ahead for him and for anyone who's going to win this election. Just eight months ago, this kind of reception was reserved for one man, Robert Mugabe. Now, Emerson Mnangagwa is savouring the attention. A man so central to the old guard, restyled as Zimbabwe's new saviour. He has promised a fresh start, 
and built an election campaign on opening new companies and courting international investors. But in June, a grenade attack at a rally was a wake-up call. The president alleged it was carried out by sympathizers of Mugabe. It was a reminder of the shadow that Zimbabwe's former strongman still casts over this country. Behind the rolling hills and fertile farmland that he and his family own, his presence looms large. They love Mugabe. And do you know, they can't, they cannot betray their peer master. That is what I think. And, and how do they feel about what happened in November? Mm, these people, <laughs> mm, they felt Nangagwa did something wrong. This campaign has moved to the former president's rural home of Jimba, a new dispensation preaching to the old. This is Mugabe's heartland, this is his town, and these are his people. Now on the surface, the atmosphere is calm, but very few people wanted to talk to us about the former president or this election. His face might not be visible, but his presence is still felt here. They are the old people who still believe that Robert Mugabe was the only person who could lead Zimbabwe, but uh, the rest of the people have moved on. The president was old. A little bit old, so he was supposed to retire. There's nothing bad about the, what has happened, and the people have understood that. For 37 years, Robert Mugabe dominated every aspect of Zimbabwe. Presidential hopeful Emerson Mnangagwa will have to win this country for himself and overcome the legacy of fear and mistrust left by his predecessor. Shingai Nyoka, BBC News, Harare, Zimbabwe. Well, in all fairness, nothing shows the desperate uh, state of Zimbabwe's economy than it is now because of the hard uh, shortage of cash, really. And when you walk through the streets, everyone's talking about dollars, talking about bonds, talking about what they're calling the eco-cash. I've been moving around speaking to different uh, entrepreneurs, different business people, just to find out how they are operating on a cashless economy. Over the years, the way people pay for goods and services in Zimbabwe has greatly changed. And in markets like this, people have had to adjust, both the buyers and the sellers. Let's just find out how this has happened. So I bought the dollar, I bought the bond, and I bought uh, the eco cash. What mode of uh, payment do you prefer? Mm, bond. Why? Why bond? Because bond is in Zimbabwe. Not the dollar at all? No. The situation now is good for bond. Yes. Has anything changed for you in terms of how you sell your products? You know, has it gone down? Has it come up? Yes, the change is uh, now looking good. It's looking good. So yes. you're okay with that? Yes. All right, let me find out from the customers then. Hello, yeah. how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering, what do you use mostly? I use a bond not. Why bond? Why not the bond. dollar, for instance? Uh, no, a dollar is there. The eco cash? No, uh, eco cash is there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I use the bond notes. Okay. Because it's cheaper. Have you found any challenges when using the bond notes yourself at all? In terms of prices of goods at all? What challenges have you had, if any? Uh, no challenge. No challenges at all. Sure. Okay. All right. So there you have it. What about the entrepreneurs? How are they making it in this cashless society? Let's go and find out. Hi Scott, how are you? How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thanks uh, for inviting us. How's business? This is okay. So how is it like for you as an entrepreneur working in a cashless economy? It has its frustrations. Um, in the past, if you wanted to buy some product, you could just go down there and pay for it. Some people don't, some of the big suppliers don't take a swipe or, a, or so you have to do a transfer, so you have to wait for it to reflect before you can go and pick it up. So that, that's one of the challenges. Um, but also the challenges is the, the products that, that we supply are from abroad, um, the, the toners, for example. So those prices keep going up. Well, let's now bring in economic expert, Dr. Nyasha Kaseke. Thank you for joining us uh, on Focus on Africa. 
Um, I spoke to a lot of people and they appeared to really not mind the bond currency. Are you surprised by that? No, I'm not surprised by that because the bond currency is now more like the medium of exchange in terms of Zimbabwe. We are now using it as a currency that we can exchange it with the local goods and uh, have the US dollars being meant for major imports in terms of major supply that we want in terms of Zimbabwe. So the use of the bond notes is actually a relief in terms of the short uh, of uh, US dollars that we'll be having in the country because we don't print US dollars in Zimbabwe, but we actually want import from our own world exports. But does it not really matter that uh, the bond cannot be used anywhere else apart from Zimbabwe, really? Yeah, it cannot be used anywhere in other countries, but as a medium of exchange in the local market, it's, it's, it is a currency that we are now using to make uh, other transactions in the world in the country. But if you go outside the country, you have to use other currencies in the form of US dollars or rands, depending on the currency that is accepted in that country. I mean, the, the, business I, the, the business person I spoke to um, mentioned the issue of tax on businesses. How big is that? And do you think whoever wins this election is capable of reducing that or m making some changes that are important? Okay, the issue to do with the taxes is actually a will by anyone who will be leading what the country or even the organization. For example, in terms of Zimbabwe, it's a will that if you want to reduce them because they've been affecting in terms of what doing business, even attracting investors in the country. For example, in the mining sector, people in the mining sector have been complaining that there are too many taxes that are there in the country. And this, compared to other countries in the region, Mozambique, South Africa, ETC, we are actually the highly taxed world country. So it's a, more to do with the political will to reduce or to eliminate or even to minimize some of these world taxes. Zimbabwe has gone through quite some battering and uh, one would ask, are Zimbabweans expecting too much, too fast? Uh, if you look in terms of Zimbabwe, we have gone down for quite long. So we don't have to ex expect a rapid change, but a change is going to come in the form of a gradual change, uh, say that we reach some of this level in terms of a medium economy world country. It is not going to be just tomorrow we are going to have everything world booming, but going to be what gradually, gradually, say that we are actually achieve our intended objectives. All right, uh, Dr. Nyasha Kaseke, thank you very much indeed uh, for talking to us on Focus on Africa. Thank you. Well, still to come on the program, The new generation of storytellers in Zimbabwe who are finding their voice in comedy. Welcome back to this special edition of Focus on Africa as Zimbabwe decides. Now, one of the biggest challenges for uh, the country or whoever wins this election is the issue of unemployment. It is estimated that about 60% of young people in this country are actually unemployed. I went to meet some of them. Scenes like these meet the eye when one drives through the streets of Harare. Young, unemployed, but appearing to earn a living. They are not all happy about their current status. Uh, what, what we want is uh, just a change uh, in terms of um, uh, of uh, we, we currently we have got a shortage of money in the banks. We want we want money in the banks. We want employment. Yeah. Despite what would be seen as a hopeless situation, there are some who actually are taking some initiative. What makes us you know, smile is, one, one thing you have to learn about you know, Zimbabweans in particular, they can smile even in the face of troubles. They can just say, it's fine, we can manage, but at the same time, they know that things are not wrong. Well. This youth, they know that everything is not wrong. Well. But now, rather than just lamenting in our homes, we thought that why don't we take the initiative of coming to the streets, we trade for the meantime, and we expect that when the environment becomes better for our businesses, we can occupy you know, shops, we can you know, formalize our businesses, we we can sell, you know, ways that, you know, are recognized by government, we can pay our taxes and so forth. One of the promises that the two main presidential candidates have made is to rectify this critical issue of lack of jobs among the youth. The government has already initiated a public employment service whose main function, among other things, is to register private employment agencies, search for jobs for seekers, and also help in career guidance and counseling. For now, the hope held by these Zimbabweans is that whoever wins the July 30th presidential election will fully embrace the burgeoning youth base. 
Now, how about this? Comedy and politics in Zimbabwe, they don't sound that they can go together, do they? But uh, they, it appears the open, the spaces have now been opening, and a lot of artists, especially comedians, have actually been able to even use their art, their work, to mock politicians, and it apparently is working quite well. We went and met a group of comedians uh, and, and young filmmakers called Bus Stop TV, and this is what they told us. Comedy has always been such a huge part of our Zimbabwean society. <laughs> Whatever tragic thing happens, people always manage to turn it around and make a joke of it. We are Bus Stop TV. We do comedy, we do news, we do skits. Action! Today we are shooting a, a skit about uh, vote buying. A lot of politicians this time, they promise a lot of things which they can't honor. So today we are, make, we are making fun of it. Oh, what's the purpose of him taking your kids? He and wants us to, to vote for him. Ah, sure. <laughs> You'll be best be sitting our kids and we'll be working. Okay, okay. We'll be sitting our kids so and we'll be working. There's actually a law. That's there, that was put in place a while back that says you cannot undermine or the authority of the president. It was quite difficult for us. Uh, at one time, we were banned from attending national events. Uh, we were banned from attending like SANU-PF events. There's certain things that you can't talk about in Zimbabwe, whether it's on social media or even day to day, because you never know who's listening. We cannot say now we are free to, 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 to do, we are, we are now free to, to, to talk about the president, to talk about the ministers. It's, it's still difficult. Yeah. We are not intimidated now. At least you can shoot us here. During the Mugabe regime, <laughs> never. You know, never. It never happened. So we're just you not know, testing the waters. So we're just waiting for after elections when whoever wins, wins, and we see how things are. <laughs> so I just hope in Zimbabwe we have the freedom to talk about the president without uh, being in trouble, the freedom to talk about anyone without the, the police coming after you. So I just hope it will change. <laughs> A bit of comedy there in politics and uh, um, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, social media and comedy and art and uh, we can now bring in Dr. Stanley Asawe. He is uh, from the University of Zimbabwe and he is a social media analyst. Uh, uh, Stanley, how much influence have uh, these issues or these things that comedians are doing, how much has that had on the thinking of voters in Zimbabwe? I think um, it's been quite interesting to see uh, the comedians telling the politics from a different perspective. And um, it is quite a big influence in terms of widening up the public sphere. We are beginning to start to, to hear a lot of voices, uh, new voices coming into the arena. And uh, they are talking about politics in ways that are a bit unique and quite uh, relieving in some way. But in terms of actually its impact or whether it's going to have some, some kind of impact uh, on the election, I think it's, it's, it's quite a bit difficult to say with precision because um, what I've seen in Zimbabwe is the electorate has become uh, generally we are a more kind of a polarized society. People have kind of crystallized into their little corners and it's a bit difficult for them to move into the other, into the other, into the other corner. So whilst it is uh, quite a welcome thing to have uh, such kind of material on our, our social media, in terms of its impact, I think it might have a minimum impact on that thing. I'm, I'm just wondering how big a difference uh, the use of social media has, is, is now compared to, to the past. Um, if you look at uh, this present election, I think there's been quite a huge uh, change from what we used to have, uh, um, say, maybe the previous election in 2013. Because you remember then, um, there was, uh, especially if you, go, if you think about Facebook, for example, we had this major, this big character, uh, faceless character called Baba Jukwa, was probably 
we had actually become one of the biggest uh, uh, providers of, uh, of, of information related to, to politics. And um, a few Zimbabweans would really comment um, without, without fear, because then, remember, during the Mugabe uh, uh, era, it was a bit difficult for people to comment on politics. But then now, in this present election, there's, there's kind of is a difference, kind of. The space is opening up. Um, the regime is kind of opened up and the people are more free to talk about these issues and that's why also if you look at the you're talking about comedy people are now commenting up uh, commenting on these issues way more liberally as compared to uh to the previous election okay so which brings me to the question of hate speech because that was one of the issues we saw for instance in in in, in a country like kenya where social media was really quite awash with it is there anything like that happening in the country and who is you know taking control of that there's quite a lot of hate speech going on. Hate speech, uh, fake news, disinformation, misinformation going on. But if you look at its source, uh, it's a bit difficult to really pinpoint. But I can give you an example. What political parties have done in Zimbabwe, they do have um, their supporters who have come online and formed uh, their online groups. And what they do then is to create a lot of propaganda that is aimed at, at supposedly opponents. Um, and there's a lot of hate speech, you know, traded on social media. Uh, those groups are actually creating a lot of um, news that is propagandistic in nature and uh, which tends also to, you know, to say a lot of bad things about the other. But again, when you look at the, the, the comments that follow those, um, on, those, on those sites, you see even the ordinary Zimbabweans are also participating in producing hate speech. Uh, they're actually calling each other's names for belonging to political party and stuff like that. All right. I, I just I, I wonder though, because a, social media is a, a, almost a global phenomenon. Have you had any sort of traffic from other countries or people on social media commenting on this particular election? Yes, um, you'll be surprised. Uh, quite a number of Zimbabweans are out there in the diaspora in South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, even overseas in the UK and America and Australia. So there's there's been quite a number of a lot of traffic coming from us of Zimbabwe. People are so much interested in what's happening in Zimbabwe. Quite a huge chunk of our population is, is out out of the country. So there's been quite a lot of uh, traffic in terms of information, you know, of, uh, people commenting on what's happening in the country and expressing their wishes. A lot of people, you might be surprised, of, of Zimbabwe are actually yearning to come back to the country because they, they really miss home. So there's quite a lot of stuff uh, coming from out of the country. All right, Dr. Stanley Tsuare of University of Zimbabwe, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your thoughts. Well, there you have it, uh, the special edition of Focus on Africa. Just to bring you up to speed with the very latest, the Electoral Commission says they are ready for the upcoming, for, uh, upcoming elections, which will be held on Monday, July the 30th. And the security forces here say they are ready. That's it for now from me, Sophie Ikenya in Harare. Goodbye.